friends lads and welcome to Bundy Bear Shed. Well what have we been up to? Well we didn't do a stew last week, we had our camp out in the paddock here and um, I think we had about 10 people, yeah three or four camps and 10 people roll in and I had a great bit of fun, did a bit of cooking in the camp oven or Dutch ovens and oh we had 10 or 20 quiet beers and things like that, yeah the, uh, it was a good, good weekend. Um, met some new people and um, got some new friends and had a ball but we didn't get up to too much in the shed this last um, week I got some parts from my John Deere front axle and I've, I have I did come home early one afternoon and I filmed some of that which will go into the axle video um, we've got most of the parts now um, yeah probably within the next week or so I might get the, get the main front axle the main pivot bit um, back into the tractor and um, we'll film that but as I say that's a separate video go and have a look if you want to um, it shouldn't be too far away now um, I've also there's a bit of a project on my phone list the, the list of little odd jobs to do um, one of the little odd jobs was to make a liner height gauge um, a liner on a tractor you have the cylinder head comes along and then you press a, a wet liner in or a even a dry liner, but you press a liner in and I used to have a little bit of square, inch square with a dial gauge in it and you could bring that up, you could measure the head surface then just pop him up and measure the, measure the other and get your liner protrusion which is important so you know the head on the machine or car or whatever you're working on um, so you know the head's got enough clamping pressure to hold the liner down and if you measure one and the liner's a bit low um, I know with John Deere you can buy two thousand shims and pull the liner out, put the shims under, put them back until you get it right. So, so I started playing with that earlier today, and um, I started with a piece of rough inch by inch square aluminium, and it just had the normal old dull mill finish off it. So I've I've, I've sat it in the milling machine and I've just squared it up on these long sides, I haven't do docked the ends off yet that will be to come but um, but the idea of this tool is to make a cut out about here bring it back and down drill a hole for a dial gauge uh, a dial indicator cut a slot in the end here and put a little grub screw or a little um, allen headed cap screw in there and the end tool will look something like something like that so you can bring it up to something and it can measure the protrusion of the liner so I've started that this morning we'll, we'll keep this going in the stew um, it's a good little project um, I'll see I might do a separate video on just that even too we'll, we'll just see what happens um, I've got a few evil bay things this week um, there's a I shop on eBay for some of the stuff as a as a muck around machinist I don't own my living machine, you know, I just like playing. And, um, but I, I make some of the tractor parts, which is my hobby and, and things like that. But I'm a, I'm a muck around machinist. I, I'm, I'm not a tradesman machinist by a long shot. Um, I just puddle along and, and get by. But um, I've, a few things I picked up this week from, from Aussie, A-U-S-E-E, -E, I think is the Australian company. They're, um, and look, I, I can't remember if I showed you these last one or not. Um, but where you, where you can have a square 5C collet block um, in, your, in your milling machines, you know, so you can put something in and mill a surface and take it out and mill a surface and take it out. Um, I, I bought an a ER40 one. And look, I've got a feeling I showed you this last time, but it was still on the bench here um, to show you. So I, I've either not put it back or I haven't showed you. So we'll show you again. So you'll have to humour me, send on a little prick. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I, I bought a square block for the mill um, with an ER40 and a hex. And the hex is yeah, same thing, same deal. Put a stop up here, and you can you can um, indicate it or, or register it to do some machining. And also they come with a. Oh, I had to order separately. Um, a nut they they come with the you buy or you buy this piece separately and they don't come with a nut so I thought oh well, I'll buy an ER40 nut to go with them and 
the nut's a great thing, it's got a ball bearing in the end of it. So, so when you're doing the nut up, um, yeah, the, this hooks onto your collet and you can turn you can turn the outer register without having it turn inside the taper. So I thought that was a good thing. So um, well, I didn't know I was buying that, but look, this 12 or 16 dollars, something like that, the nuts. And so um, I've actually bought some nuts for the other ones now, and the other the other ER40 collets and the um, um, the backing plate, ER40 backing plates to put in the load and that. So um, yeah, it'll be a good thing. I've got some more nuts, so that's that's a good job. And I'll put them away. If I tell you again about them next week, send me a message. Say, Christ, you old bastard. You're losing it. <laughs> Another thing that come in, I've got this out of England. Uh, it's a Morse 3 taper um, sleeve with a 20mm shank. And the idea of that because with that plate I bought for, with the plate I bought, the idea of this is with the plate I bought for sharpening end mills, I'm hoping I can hold this in the collet on the sharpener and bring the stone across the top and sharpen it. Now, it may well have too much stick out and you know, not be rigid enough to, to do it properly. I don't know, but it's something I thought I'd like to try. So, you um, and. Once I've done this little aluminium job, the mill needs a big clean up and it, it's quite a mess at the moment. So I'll, I'll finish this little job making the, um, making the, um, the sleeve height gauge and then the mill will have a big clean up and we'll, we'll take the vice and everything off and we'll, we'll set this all up. And I was thinking the, um, the angle plate, the Stevenson angle plate, um, for sharpening end mills, it, it might be just as easy to sit it in the vice on those angles instead of clamping it down, but we'll have to deal with that as we come to it. So, but this is, yeah, just something. I've, I've got five or six or more of these um, number three Morse taper end mills. So, I don't know, I just had a bit of an idea that that might work all right to hold them just for sharpening. Well, I've still got to make the, make the guide for the cup brush yet, so, or cup wheel, I should say. So, so that's, that's that job, I'll put them away. <laughs> I ordered a, a dial indicator, a dial test indicator from Evil Bay and they've tried to copy Michitoyo. They call it Mil, Milu Loyo, I think. I don't know if I can get that clear enough for you to see. But, I have a, one of those small, uh, one of the Mini Nogas I was going to um, um, put this on the Mini Noga and, and you know you get your little dovetails for the back here but um, this was supposed to have the dovetails and all in it but it didn't come with them. So um, I got on to the people I bought it off and um, on eBay and they just said oh no worries, here's your money back. They didn't say can we send you another one or anything like that, they said oh here's your money back. So, um, so I ended up with a free indicator gauge. I'm hoping that I do have a couple of dovetails from something else that I can, I can use, or, or this, will, this won't be much chop. But um, anyway, so we'll have to decide which way we go with that. Now, also setting up these small dial test indicators um, in the little Noga stands, um, I bought two of these. Now these are these are digital these are digital dial testing oh well digital dial gauges and yeah they do metric and imperial you can just change it over so um, the reason I bought one of these um, was to put on this liner height gauge um, and I thought this would be good because once you, um, well, some John Deere's, if it's an American engine, it'll say, um, say, four thou protrusion of the liner. Yet, um, if it's a, a German or a European thing, it'll be metric. So I thought, well, if we make the gauge to suit, make the piece of steel to take this gauge, 
um, and we're following a, a spec in a book and it says um, yeah, 0.02 of a millimetre or something like that. Well, we can just click between millimetres and thou. Um, so whether we're working on a metric machine or, machine or an imperial machine, that should do the job. So, so I bought two of those, because it's always better when you have two of something. And there's the other fellow there. And um, they also come, they have a flat back on them, but they also come with a new, a new back that you can mount them to an indicator. So, so the flat back will be good for the, for the sleeve liner or the sleeve protrusion gauge. So I also bought um, for these, these um, groove cutters, the insert groove cutters, um, would you believe I bought three packets of 10 um, inserts for them. They're tiny little blokes. And these fit one of my other parting tools. I've got two small grooving and parting tools and they fit them too. And um, usually with parting and grooving, you're not feeding big heaps and you know, you're just going in taking a little peck. So um, these cheap ones seem good. Um, 30 inserts for $38 um, delivered to Australia. So um, that's a good thing. That'll give me some spares for, for both these boring bars. And I also have another, um, another rigid um, parting tool or grooving tool coming. So they will fit them. I made sure that'll all work as well. Um, I was having a bit of a, a bit of a whinge the other day about these screws, and I finally, just just yesterday, I got a packet of stainless ones, and we'll, we'll do a bit of a test on them shortly. Um, and look, the reason I went stainless is they weren't expensive, and stainless should be hard. Like most stainless is harder than um, this muck metal that these are made of and with the with these other ones when we take it out I've got these quite a bit shorter and what the idea is is I should be able to screw them in to the um, to the holder here and by the time they come through down the bottom to tighten onto the tool I should have very little or next to none out, of, out the top here. So at 16 millimetres um, on my 250-201 indicator here, or the holder here, I've got indicator on the head. Um, yeah, that's, that's how that will sit for that one. You can just see a slight bit of thread down the bottom and we're almost flush at the top. So, so these long screws will all disappear and that should make a nice, neat job of those. And while I was buying them off the people, they also had a little kit here, eleven dollars. And the little kit's an assortment, an assortment of Allen head grub screws. So I thought, well, while the, while the post was coming, we'd get them too, and um, that'd work. These these little stainless steel poles. They're 8 by one25 millimetres. And so part of today's job will be um, I'll run through all my tool holes and I might even um, um, reset all the tool heights and all that, just make sure they're right and, and yeah, take the time to service everything up properly. So um, sometimes, <laughs> you know, when you're racing the shed, you think, oh, just do this and just do that. And you blow into the shed and you do something and you blow out again and you leave all your mess there, you don't take the time. I, I look on YouTube at other people's channels and I look at their lathes and milling machines and benches and all that and bloody spotless. And um, look, I clean mine up a little bit, but mine are never that good. But um, I am thinking of making some guides or some um, bed covers for the milling machine because um, the vice, I usually put the vice in the one spot most commonly. And um, I see people with bits of, bits of tin and bits of, this and that there, bits of board and that there, and I, I might do that to try and keep the whole show a bit tidier, but anyway, we'll just see how we go with that. And um, and further on today, we'll probably do a bit more on this John Deere front axle. It's it's a quite a big job. Um, I got this pin, I got a new pin here the other day. We've just finished filming, fitting the new pin to this housing here. Um, so that's, um, that's gonna be a long video. By the time, 
we um, we knock it through, it'll probably be three quarters an hour to an hour, I suppose. Um, and that's with editing all the humdrumming, if I can. And um, so we'll see, see how we go. But today, today we're just going to do this little thing, just as a way of a project. I'm just trying to um, do something off my list of little odd jobs and little things I see on people's channels and. Um, you see people's machine, other lathes and milling machines, and you think, boy, that's a good idea, I'll do that. And um, yeah, things like, you know, the, the, instead of having to get the spanner to turn your quick change tool hold, they've made another handle there. James Green's done that, and things like that. So um, quite a few others have, I see. So that's on the list to do. Um, anyway, stay tuned, chug along, and um, yeah, we'll just see what we can get up to. Well, we're over in the middle with that little one inch square block and we're just going to run across here a few times and bring it down to about 10 mil thickness so we'll take about 16 mil or 5 eighths of an inch out of here roughly it doesn't matter how much we take that that's not important um, we just have to leave enough to hold the hold the gauge and um, enough so we can clamp it properly and we'll tidy up this end while we're up this way so We'll just do a bit of a bit of milling. We'll just drop it down one mil. And we'll just see how we're going. Aluminium, bit of bit of possum feed, WD40 type stuff. Feeding by hand, nice and steady. Just a couple. and tidy up that bag a bit. And it 
come down enough to tidy up that end edge. Well, that's not looking too bad. We've got the shoulder, so now we need to drill a hole down here. Right up near this shoulder, or reasonably close to the shoulder. Um, and then cut down here so we can clamp the dial gauge in. So while we have this set up, we'll, we'll put a chuck in there and we'll just drill. We'll measure the stem of the dial indicator and we'll drill a hole the right size, just a snug fit at this stage and later on we can bring this little little cut in through here well I've just deburred these edges here and I've put the edge finder in, I've found the edge of both sides and I've brought the centre of the truck into the centre of this piece of aluminium here and I've indicated off here and I've come in 350 thou off the edge and so this gauge will sit this way up in there, that'll give us plenty of room for clamping um, we can bring the gauge up and down however we like but now so we know what size hole we need to measure we'll zero the indicator we need to know what size this stem is here so we know what size indicators or what size hole to dig I'm sorry hole to dig crikey eight millimeters so we're going to get an eight millimeter drill we'll just pop a little hole down in here and yeah we'll do that first right so put the dial indicator away out of harm's way so I don't chuck shit all over it bit of possum pee I might put these away too, they don't really need to get all covered in rubbish we just pop a little hole down here There we go. Right in. Got a little sharpies there, I'll probably tear my finger off. Okay, we'll deburr them. We'll deburr that hole now. If we wait till we got the hole cut in there and we go to deburr it, we'll have that bloody that edge to contend with. So we'll just get a, um, I'll take this out of the vice now and I'll just get a hand deburrer and we'll tidy that up. Right we've got the hole done and we've got this slitting saw somewhere around the middle. It's not exact, nothing's measured in this except for the hole size. We haven't done any measuring. So we'll get this going and we'll just put it on a slow feed. I'll probably try and get it pretty close to centre of the saw if I can. I'll just try and take him in gently. Oh, 
This is our slow feed. all the way through. Okay, another little job done. Well, we found a little screw. That's a Allen head, little Allen headed cap screw. The thread, the thread is 5 by 0.8, so it's metric coarse for that. So the tapping drill for that should be 4.2 mil. I don't have a 4.2 mil. I have a 4 mil. Yeah, that's going to have to do. We'll put a bit of possum pee on, and away we go. Right, so that's all the way through. What we'll do is bring a, a clearance hole for this into the top half now, just to that split there. We won't go any further than that. And um, then we'll probably bring a little end mill down to put a place for the, for the cap screw to go. We have the clearance drilling now. So I'll hop down, I'll start it, and I'll just hop down and eyeball it so I can see it just come through. measure the head of this fella 8.4 I'll see how 5 16th goes for the end mill I might have a 5 16th end mill for that now I've put a 5 16th four flute end mill in there and we need to come down five millimeters so we just need to come down till we touch and I'll just use the dial on the mill for the the next For the next measurement and just try and get it about five mil. We just want that head close to flush if we can. I'll zoom out a little bit so you can right, 
zero that. So uh, half a mil. Two mil. Two and a half. Three. Three and a half. Four. Four and a half. Five. So that'll give us a counter sink for the head. Now I'm not sure the head's going to go in there exactly. It's going to be a tight fit. <coughs> And that's as close as I have, so I'll probably just <coughs> I mean, I'll probably just take a little bit off the side of the um, I'll take that little knurling off the side of the screw there, and that should give us plenty of plenty of room and it'll give us a nice full thread down the bottom here. Not that it has to be very tight, it's just got to you, you can actually press on that and clamp it in with your fingers, so it doesn't have to be that tight. So we'll continue on. I'll um. I'll probably turn this upside down now and we'll start tapping the thread. I'll see. We've got the other hand on the worm up the top here. And as I turn I can just a little bit of pressure on it. And as I turn I can feel it go through. So that should have a nice straight start. We've got a bit coming out the bottom there. Now we just got to keep it straight. Plenty of A9 aluminium cutting fluid. That's an old tin I've had for a while. We'll just, I've got a 16 mil end mill in here, we'll just run and park, just to tidy it up. Cessna. There we go, 
on YouTube. That's the finished product. The matte finish isn't too bad. I've got a bit of inox on it. I found with it dry, it marked up with the fingers a little bit. But um, anyway, look, I'll, I'll get a few happy snaps. We're going to call that a wrap this week. Um, try and be good, stay out of bloody mischief. And I might take a few happy snaps with this and tag it on the end. We'll catch you next week, eh? See ya.